Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I have teamed up with Progressive and we're going to be learning about the science of snow driving. Now to understand snow driving we need to understand a tire's grip and to understand grip we need to understand g-forces. So a g-force is a measurement of acceleration. There's one g pulling me down right now, the Earth's gravity. When you go on a roller coaster you may experience two to three g's pushing you from side to side as you go around that roller coaster. Well, you can think of this similarly with your tire. So there's an ultimate amount of grip that it has. And so that can be displayed as a traction circle. So the ultimate amount of grip that that tire has displayed as a circle. So in any one direction, it may have about one G of grip. Uh, so you can withstand one G of acceleration without the car sliding out. Now that's in a dry scenario. If it starts raining and the roads are wet, then that traction circle decreases. And the ultimate amount of grip you have is now about 0.7 Gs. Now, if you go down even further to say, let's say you're driving in the snow now, you may only have about 0.3 Gs of grip. And then if you're driving on the ice, that traction circle shrinks even further. And now you only have about 0.15 Gs of grip. So you don't have much traction at all in any one direction. So whether you're cornering, whether you're braking, whether you're accelerating, this traction circle tells you, you know, depending on the force that you're trying to apply to the ground with your tires, are you going to be able to, you know, maintain grip or are you going to slide out? If you exceed that traction circle, the car starts to slide. So now to put this in context, let's talk about stopping distances. So let's say you're driving at 30 miles per hour in the dry, you know, it's sunny, it's nice outside, and you're driving on dry pavement. You slam on the brakes at 30 miles per hour and you come to a stop based on our initial traction circle in just 30 feet. Well, if it starts raining and it's wet, now your stopping distance is increased to 43 feet. If you're on snow, stopping from 30 miles per hour, now it's about 100 feet. And if you're on ice, now we've doubled that to 200 feet. So more than six times the distance to stop on ice rather than stopping on dry pavement based on our initial traction circle. Well, what if we were now stopping from 60 miles per hour to zero? Well, because the stopping distance is a function of speed squared, this means our stopping distances have been multiplied by four. So stopping from 60 to zero in the dry means it takes 120 feet, stopping in the wet, 172 feet, stopping in the snow, 400 feet, and stopping on ice, 800 feet. Now, the same logic can be applied to cornering as well. So let's say we're at an intersection and there are four lanes, two lanes in each direction, and you're turning from the inside lane, making a left turn into the next inside lane. So that's gonna be a, a radius of about 30 feet. So you're gonna be taking a corner with about a 30 foot radius. Well, if the road is dry, you're gonna be able to make that corner at 21 miles per hour. If it's wet, that's gonna reduce your maximum speed to about 18 miles per hour. If there's snow on the ground, now you're down to about 12 miles per hour. And if there's ice on the ground, now you're down to about eight miles per hour that you can make that 30 foot radius corner at the intersection. So now that we understand how grip works in snow and ice, what does that tell us about how we should drive in winter conditions? And the most important thing going back to that traction circle is, you know, if you know you're gonna be driving in the snow, it's a great idea to get some winter tires because that will increase the size of your traction circle when you're driving on snow and ice. So that means you have better acceleration, better grip, better cornering ability, better braking. So all of that comes down to that traction circle. The most important thing you can do to improve your driving in the winter is to get a nice set of tires tires for winter driving. You also want to be smooth and slow with your driving input. So easing onto the throttle, easing into the brakes, lightly turning in with your steering wheel. You don't want to have quick, sharp uh, inputs because that's going to upset the car's balance. So you're going to start to slide. You'll lose grip with your tires with what you're asking it to do. So be easy on the inputs. Drive a little bit slower. You know, you're obviously going to have to drive slower because that's what conditions allow for. You can't drive as fast as you can on dry pavement. You're also gonna to wanna to give yourself more space between you and the car ahead of you. So often, you know, driving in the dry, you may drive with three to four seconds ahead of you, whereas in the snow and ice, you might wanna give yourself maybe eight or more seconds behind the car in front of you. That way, if anything happens up ahead, you've got plenty of time to react to it because your car can't slow down as quickly as it can in the dry. 
And finally, if you're traveling through deep snow, it's a good idea to keep momentum, keep your car moving. So don't let it come to a complete stop. Of course, if there's a stoplight, something like that, then you have to come to a stop. But if you can avoid it, keep your car moving because chances are, if you're going to get your car stuck, it's when you're going to come to a stop and then you're going to try to accelerate. You're going to be in too deep of snow to accelerate and it's not going to let you keep moving. So the best idea when you're traveling in snow is to keep your car moving and, you know, get yourself a nice set of tires. That way you're maximizing your traction circle and, you know, you have the best possibility of traveling in those conditions. So hopefully this has been helpful and educational about winter driving. A big thanks to Progressive for partnering on the video. Thanks for watching.